now that we have defined what the application state will look like, this is the perfect moment to introduce the store to our application. So the store is a centralized service that contains the application state and that can be injected anywhere on the application so that any part of the application can be notified that the new state is available. Let's configure that service here in the import section of our application. So we have installed ngrx store. Let's at this moment import store module and take a look at the import. We simply import store module from ngrx store. Using store module, we are going to call the provide store method. And inside we are going to pass in a configuration object. So if we jump into the type definitions, we're going to see that here we are going to pass in a reducer. We are going to see exactly what the reducer is in a moment and we're going to pass it in some initial state. So let's have a look at this. For the moment, we're going to pass it in an empty configuration object. We will get back to this definition in a moment. Right now, we have the store available for injection anywhere in our system. So let's take a look. Let's go here, for example, to thread section. So to this smart component right here that contains the list of threads and knows what the currently selected thread is. Let's inject the store in this component. So if we head over to thread section component, we can see here that in the constructor, we can inject the store service. So it's a Angular service, an injectable Angular service, just like any other. So let's import it with Alt Enter. We have imported store from NGRX store. Now take a look, store requires a generic parameter. So if we over over the error that we are receiving here, we, we see that the store needs one generic parameter. And this parameter is the type definition of the store application state. So we have already defined a custom type for that. It's the application state custom type. So this means that the store will be notifying any interested part of the application of new versions of the application state. Let's have a look at the store API to see what we can do with it. So we can dispatch an action and we're going to see how we dispatch actions in a moment. We are going to create our first action. There is also another important method, select. But right now, take a look at this. We have here a subscribe method. So it looks like the store is really an observable of application state. Let's have a look to see if the other typical methods of an RxJS observable are available. As you can see, everything is here. So this is the most important notion about an NGRX store. It's an observable of application state. To show that this is so, let's simply subscribe to this observable. Just the same way as we would subscribe to the lowered user threads backend method that returns us an observable of all user data. Let's simply subscribe to the store. And what we're going to do here is we are simply going to log to the console the value of each application state. If we would run the application at this stage, it wouldn't work for multiple reasons. One of them being there is nothing that we have stored yet in our store. We are simply reading the data here from the backend, but we have not passed it on to the store. So let's do that. Let's simply load the user data. So all the user data, let's you load it from the backend doing this REST API call that we see here. And we are going to load the participants, the threads and the messages. In order to be able to store the data in the store, we are going to dispatch our first action. It's coming right up in the following lesson.